welcome to the Journey Shea Cam. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for accepting this challenge to work with a young person to help them through the first year of high school chemistry. It's going to be great fun. And I have laid out everything for you. You don't have to worry about knowing any chemistry because it's all completed and done for you. However, there are a few things that we need to go over so that you're prepared to accept this challenge. Well, every day we follow the same basic process. It starts out with introducing the day. And I say, welcome to the Journey Shake Chem. And I give the day in a code that will help all of us every single day. And the first day of school is 111. And that means the first quarter, the first week, and the first day. And there are four quarters in the year. And we'll go through how the grades are determined for the whole year and each semester. But this code is critical. And then there are two warm-up questions that are given. And the student is required to write these questions in a composition notebook. And this is critical for the success of the student. The warm-up questions must be written down with the code because there it will be a quiz once a quarter to verify that the student has written everything down that is in the warm-up. And when we have the quiz, and I will discuss it when we talk about quizzes more specifically, the quiz will leave out critical numbers. So they have to have everything written completely in their composition notebook. And then they try to answer it to the best of their ability. And then I go over the answers in great detail. It's important that the student make sure that they get the correct answers because sometimes the students don't make the corrections and then as a study guide, it has some real problems there. Well, we need to make sure that those answers are always correct because it's our study guide. And also, we have a lot of handouts and they'll need a three ring binder as well to keep those organized. Then, after we go over the answers to the two warm-up questions, we discuss some new material and take some notes. And I recommend that they put those notes in the composition notebook as well, because that way everything is right there, it's in sequential order that we need it. And that's a very good process. Then, it's important for you as the facilitator to review whatever the assignment was that last evening. It's very important for students to go over their work the following day because that keeps us all on track and make sure that we understand as we're going because it is all very cumulative and we need to go over that assignment each day and that is very very important and then there's a new worksheet a new assignment to practice what we just learned for that day and that's the daily process that we go through every day. Now there are little bits of differences in between but you'll be told how that works as we go when we do labs or we do a demonstration and that sort of thing. It, it's very self-explanatory. But this is the general process that we go through every day. Well, let's take a, a look at how we make the grade for the quarter. The quarter is composed of four different types of graded assignments. And the first one, the big one, are the assessments. And assessments are the same thing as tests, but tests are just kind of scary, so we, I like to call them assessments. And that's 40%. Then we have quizzes. And quizzes are 20% of the quarter grade. And as I said before, we'll have a warm-up quiz grade. And everything is graded on 100 points or 100%, which makes it very, very straightforward. And the warm-up quiz, I select five questions that we have gone over in the quarter, and I leave out critical numbers. But we know which one it is because it follows the code, and the code would be given on the quiz. We have five questions, each worth 20 points, giving a total of 100. 
And one of the most important things with grading in this process is that we always give partial credit when possible. And because there's 100 points on everything, there's usually plenty of places to give partial credit. And if something, for example, the warm-up quiz, if the question is completely wrong, if you take 10 points out of the 20, that's still not a passing score, but it just needs a little bit more work to get it up to a passing score. But we like to give that partial credit. The other thing about grading that's very important is to be consistent, that whatever you do, the decisions that you make, you just continue to, to follow through with that process and be consistent. Consistency is critical. Then we have labs. I will perform all of the labs on the DVDs for the virtual student. And the virtual student will need, the virtual student, no, I, the student's not virtual, I'm the virtual one. But when I do the lab, I answer a lot of the lab questions as I go. It may be necessary to listen to those labs a couple of times to get all the information out. But I gather the data, the student needs to record that data so that they can write up a complete lab report. And the guidelines for the lab reports are given in the student packet, the first day packet for the students. It requires the title, the objective, the procedure, the data table, and any conclusions or further investigation questions that are asked are required in that complete write-up. And all of those labs go together for a 20% of the quarter grade. We consider chemistry to be a lab science, so labs are extremely important. Then we have other. Well, other is everything else, and that gives us 20%, and therefore we have 100%. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about some of the things that are in the other category. The first thing are the outlines or notes, and that depends on the facilitator how they would like to handle that. If you're using a textbook and you know which chapter, you just assign that chapter to be outlined. And due dates are given in that as well. And also sometimes there's terms to define. And that would be scored 100 points for one grade in the other category. And then we have homework checks. Well, it's the only thing that's not graded on 100% to begin with. What happens with that is that it is checked for completion. And oftentimes for review, we have four page worksheets. And if a student only does three and a half out of four, well, then they're given a check minus. And normally I always check those review sheets. A check minus would be five out of the 10 possible points. If the assignment is complete, then they get a check, which is 10 out of the 10 points. And if it's not done, it's they don't get any points, it's a zero on those checks. Then we add all 10 of those up to get one score of 100. And that gives us an idea if the students are doing the assignments because it's critical for understanding. We have to practice. And oftentimes there are worksheet A, B, C, D, E, and F, and maybe the student doesn't need to go through that many practice problems. It's on an as-needed basis. And you'll understand that and see that for the student as we go through the process. And that total homework average then goes into the other category. Now there's also something that's for the student. They can do some extra credit. Normally what I have students do is bring in tissues or paper towels or something that's required for the classroom. It's a community service type of thing and they get 100 points in the other category for that. Now all of these things are set up on an Excel spreadsheet for you. Everything is given. And once you make the score, you enter that on the spreadsheet and it will calculate it for you exactly. You don't have to worry about those details. It's all been done for you. And that's how we handle each quarter. And for the quarters then, we have two quarters for each semester. Quarter one is worth 40% of the semester grade. Quarter two is worth 40% of the semester grade. And then we have the semester exam. And that is worth 20% of the semester grade, giving us 100%. They would have two grades, semester one and semester two would be how we are putting the quarters together for the one full year of chemistry. I can't
can't tell you how important that you are for this process and how much I appreciate what we are doing uh, here together because we're in this together for the benefit of the student. There is one more thing that I need to discuss with you and that is one of my favorite assignments. They are called journal cards. Well, journal cards, the student has three to do every quarter. And what they do is they read an article in a magazine and I give the topics. The first topic is elements. They use a five by eight file card to write the required information on. And this information is given in the first day packet for the student as well as when the due dates are coming up. And the first thing they do is write their name, date, and time that they did this journal card. And if they're in a class, they would put which period it is. Then they write the topic, and the first one would be elements, and that's worth five points. Then they give the bibliographic information of where the article came from in the format that is assigned, which would be MLA format. Students need to get an idea of how to cite information, and there are many different formats, but one of the most common ones is MLA. And you can go online and use Write for College, or there are textbooks out there to help you with that. But I give the format in the first day packet for the students. Then they write a summar summary of the article. Now the article itself does not have to be about a specific element. It just has to mention an element. You could find a, an article in Better Homes and Gardens that has an article about gold jewelry. Or you could find about coal mining and in Mother Earth news about how we are saving energy by using coal or not saving energy, but the article will give information about that. Diamond mining in South Africa, there are so many ways that elements are involved in our everyday life that we don't even realize. And this way students get to read outside of the classroom in something that they choose. Then they write one statement that is objective about the magazine, and students have a very difficult time with this. This is not the objective of the magazine. This is an objective statement, which means it's not a personal opinion. For example, this magazine is published on a weekly basis. This magazine is written for people interested in sports. That would be the type of statement that would be required, a non-personal opinion. And then they get to write a personal opinion because it requires a personal reaction to the article. These are very, very important for the student to do, and reading is extremely important in our education. And I love reading them. They're interesting. I find out all kinds of new things. And the student actually enjoys them as well. Students always complain about some things, but journal cards are a fun thing for them to do. And that's how we organize the year. At as I said, you don't have to worry about knowing any chemistry. I've taken care of all of that for you. And every day we have the same process and you'll get used to it. One of the biggest things for me was the code. I always had to have the code. That kept me on the right track. And I'm sure it'll help you too. Well, I'm so excited that you're here and I'm so excited that we're doing this program together. We're going to have lots of fun and we're going to learn a lot of things. Well, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.